Recently, an advertisement for a cleaning position was released by the Office of Official Affairs in Nanjiang Town, Foshan City, Guangdong Province. The ad specified an age requirement of under 35 years old, drawing significant attention from society. The Chinese governmental department required the janitorial candidates to be female, at least 158 centimeters or taller, with a minimum education of junior high school. The ad noted that experience in catering services would be a plus. The responsibilities encompass routine cleaning during venue operations and assistance with meetings, events, and receptions. Reportedly, after deducting social security and housing fund contributions, the janitorial position offers a monthly salary of 3,000 yuan, approximately 410 dollars, excluding overtime pay. In 1994, interim provisions regarding civil servant requirement issued by the Chinese Communist government stipulated an age requirement of below 35. Subsequently, many provinces have adopted this age criterion for their civil service recruitments. Some netizens commented, "This concept of 35 comes from the top." Others lamented, "If public offices reject those over 35, private companies are even more stringent." And on the one hand, there's talk of delaying retirement. On the other, even janitors can't be over 35. How can we expect a favorable job market? Following the end of China's COVID-19 lockdown policy, the public hoped for economic recovery and a return to normal life. However, even after the lockdowns were lifted, the economy remained sluggish, with a lack of consumer demand, a languishing real estate market, and local governments mired in debt crises. Given the economic downturn and a weak job market, many businesses have been making layoffs. Employees over 35 often find themselves first to be let go. Once out of work, they face challenges securing new employment, putting many in this age group in a difficult situation. This phenomenon has led to discussions of a 35-year-old curse in China, which has been a popular topic this year. I may not make it," said one woman who was recently unemployed. "I've just completed the resignation process. After spending 12 years in Beijing, today marks my last working day. Everyone said 2023 would be tough, with companies laying off everywhere. Sadly, I couldn't escape the axe. I started my day as usual, taking a bus across provinces to work, ordering takeout for lunch. But in the afternoon, the boss suddenly called a meeting, marking the end of my job. This woman, devastated by the unexpected job loss, shared. Being laid off has hit me hard. I began applying for jobs immediately upon hearing the news, but have received no responses. Currently, my monthly expenses, including food, accommodation, transportation, and credit card installments, come up to 8,000 yuan, about 1,093 U.S. dollars, excluding unforeseen medical expenses. Every day has its cost. Suddenly, losing my income has filled me with anxiety. If I don't find work soon, I'm not sure how much longer I can hold on. I haven't even dared to call my family about the layoff, fearing they would be overly worried. The woman revealed that the employment situation has deteriorated significantly in recent years, with millions of companies in Beijing going bankrupt over the past two years. Being 35 this year, she feels she's at an age where job hunting becomes even more challenging. Currently, many factories in China also have an age requirement for recruitment set at under 35. Some individuals have even been dismissed due to exceeding this age limit. This area here is a small square within the village. Which used to be a hub for factories recruiting workers, the number of job advertisements has noticeably dwindled. I noticed several spots displaying job announcements from the same factory. There used to be numerous hiring advertisements on the roadside, but now there are none. It feels like job hunting this year isn't as easy as before, and many factories have set age limits for hiring. Take this job, for instance. With a base salary of just 1,950 yuan, they all require candidates to be under 35 years of age. Hello, everyone. I was let go from the factory today. Another individual shared, "I'm 37, and the reason given for my dismissal was my age. I've worked there for nearly nine months, and the severance package was less than 5,000 yuan, maybe a bit over 4,000 yuan. Is 37 considered old?" I'm really puzzled. Now I have to start the job hunt all over again. It's incredibly challenging, especially when jobs are scarce and the salaries are low. It's truly frustrating. Unemployment and the difficulty of finding work for individuals over the age of 35 have become prevalent issues in China, affecting even the highly educated and top executives. I hold a master's degree from a prestigious 985 university and have been unemployed for six months. Almost 98.8 of my job applications have gone unanswered. Once you're over 35, you seem to become invisible in the job market. To make ends meet, I started working as a food delivery driver before the Chinese New Year. 
business has been slow, and I'm hustling to snag any available orders. I even saw a recruitment ad for a Taoist priest position in my hometown. But again, they aren't interested in anyone over 35. The individual who filmed the video showed his thesis and graduation certificate to verify his credentials. He lamented being unable to find long-term employment, even failing to secure a position as an intern with a monthly salary of 2,000 yuan, 273 US dollars. His ordeal has left him deeply distressed. Another mainland netizen shared online, I was previously a project manager, earning an easy 15,000 yuan, $2,050 a month, but I suddenly found myself unemployed at 35. I quit my job out of frustration last year, and after being jobless for four months, even a warehousekeeper position on a construction site offering 3,500 yuan, $478 a month, isn't interested in hiring me. They prefer fresh graduates. Working in construction this year has been tough. What's going on this year? Should I change my career path? What can I do? According to the New York Times, Mr. Liang, age 38, has been unemployed for most of the past three years. He told the Times that aside from the impacts of COVID-19 and the economic downturn, age has been the primary reason for his unemployment. He pointed to local government job postings showing that the age requirements for all positions were set between 18 and 35 years old. Due to his inability to afford the monthly rent of 600 yuan, approximately $82, Mr. Liang moved to his hometown from Guangzhou in southern China. He remained unmarried, as do three of his cousins of a similar age. According to him, only those with stable jobs, such as those working in government agencies or as teachers, have the capacity to start families. Ms. Zhang has already been told by potential employers that she is too old. She points out that Chinese companies tend to chase after the latest trends rather than refining what they already have. Hence, experience and specialized knowledge are not their primary criteria. Ms. Zhang, a marketing professional, was laid off last September. She reached out to over 3,000 companies and submitted her resume to more than 300 of them, yet she received fewer than 10 interview opportunities. Both she and her husband feel financially incapable of raising a child. With a mortgage to pay and her being out of work, they struggled to make ends meet and lived in fear that her husband might also lose his job. Referring to a popular online sentiment, Ms. Zhang said, If bringing a child into this world means passing on a legacy of toil, anxiety, and poverty, then choosing not to have one is an act of kindness. The precarious situation of Chinese netizens around the age of 35 isn't the only concern. The number of unemployed middle-aged individuals over 40 is also growing at an alarming rate. These individuals, often with children to raise, household expenses to cover, and burdensome mortgages and car loans, face significant financial hardships once they lose their jobs. The societal and national impacts of this unemployment trend could be even more profound. A 41-year-old friend of mine, a graduate of Xi'an Jiao Tong University, has been working in major internet companies for over a decade, earning a monthly salary of 60,000 yuan. Back when housing was more affordable, he purchased a 70 square meter apartment in the Nanshan Central District. After having triplets a couple of years ago, he upsized to a 130 meter home costing over 10 million yuan. With monthly installments exceeding 40,000 yuan, his salary barely covers the mortgage, and his wife shoulders all living and educational expenses for their children. However, he was laid off this year. Though he received a severance pay, the funds will soon be drained by his mortgage. If he defaults, his family of five could end up homeless. The man sharing his story revealed that his friend is in a state of extreme anxiety. Despite relentlessly sending out resumes daily, his age, now over 40, has led to rejections from numerous companies. If he can't secure a job soon, he's considering becoming a rideshare driver or food delivery worker. It remains a perplexing transformation for him, an elite graduate of a top-tier university, to transition from a white-collar professional to a blue-collar worker virtually overnight. A recent online article titled, When a 45-year-old middle-aged man seeks employment again, has sparked heated discussions on mainland Chinese platforms. The article details the story of 45-year-old Wei Peng, who, a decade ago, served as the regional general manager of a homes good enterprise in southern China. At that time, he boasted an annual salary of 800,000 yuan, approximately 109,370 US dollars, and owned a house and car, overseeing more than 100 subordinates. After becoming unemployed this year, Wei has struggled to secure formal employment. He applied for part-time roles at chain stores like KFC, Pizza Hut, Ikea, and Starbucks, but to no avail. A KFC manager candidly remarked that they prefer young male and female students for their 16.5 yuan per hour, $2.26, beverage attendant positions. Undeterred, Wei continued to apply for various jobs, including cleaning air conditioner and exhaust hoods, only to face rejection or silence. 
He gradually realized that at 45, he had crossed an unemployment red line due to age discrimination common in Chinese businesses. Currently, Wei works as a courier for flash delivery, earning 18 yuan, two dollars and forty-six cents per hour. On his first day, he made 155 yuan, roughly twenty dollars. He previously took a part-time job at a flower shop near his home, earning just fifteen and a half yuan per hour, one dollar and seventy cents. Surprisingly, many were eager for the position, and the number of applicants continued to grow. With persistently high unemployment rates, an increasing number of Chinese are abandoning traditional job hunting, seeking other opportunities. Many are turning to the low-barrier entry live streaming industry. According to Reuters, a 28-year-old live streamer named Zhang, who has a master's degree and was formerly a model and blogger, said, For live streaming, the barrier to entry is low. You just need a smartphone. However, standing out is challenging due to intense competition. Whether or not I can distinguish myself depends on my mental resilience and capabilities, she noted. Data from consulting firm iResearch reveals that since the outbreak of the pandemic in 2020, the live streaming industry in China has welcomed 1.23 million new hosts. With China's economic recovery appearing distant and youth unemployment rates soaring, many young people are contemplating careers as internet celebrities and live streamers. Based on a survey released by Weibo in July, of nearly 10,000 new graduates polled, 61.6% would consider emerging careers like live streaming, while only 38.4% would not. Mainland media outlet Daily Economic News reported that not only are new streamers finding it tough, but top streamers' incomes have also notably decreased this year. Chen Xiaoxia, a senior talent development consultant who once taught at Xiamen University's Jiageng College, pointed out that the 80-20 rule is evident in the live streaming industry. 20% of the streamers earn 80% of the profits. What we see are the successful 20%, but in reality, the majority remain aspirants. Data from the China Online Performance Live Streaming and Short Videos Industry Development Report 2022 to 2023 indicates that in 2022 the majority of live streamers were aged 18 to 29, making up 64.2% of the total, while those aged 30 to 39 constituted 20.9%. Among those relying primarily on live streaming for income, 95.2% earned a monthly income below 5,000 yuan. $683, and only 0.4% earned over 100,000 yuan, $13,667. However, intense competition within China's live streaming sector is evident, with public data showing that 90% of streamers aren't making a profit. With an influx of young individuals, the live streaming industry is increasingly showing its preference for youth. Amidst fierce competition and strict age restraints, the seemingly glamorous emerging professions like live streaming lack stability. While those above 35 in China face significant employment challenges, young college graduates also grapple with difficulties securing jobs. Before the Chinese government suspended the announcement of youth unemployment rates, the figure stood at 21.3% in June. Professor Zhang Dandan from Peking University suggests that the real number could be as high as 46.5%. China's employment landscape is becoming increasingly challenging, reflecting the downward pressures on the country's economy. Regarding the escalating unemployment issue in China, Jiang Hao, the deputy director of an economic research institute, believes that political factors are at the core. He told Voice of America, This problem actually began over a decade ago. The government hasn't been particularly supportive of private enterprises. Instead of encouraging investments, they've imposed various fees and scared away the wealthy for various reasons. The exodus of foreign capital is even more evident. How can anyone feel confident investing in China? To absorb labor, there needs to be capital, new capital. Otherwise, the economy will stagnate, merely treading water. Zhang further noted that the recent U.S.-China trade tensions have exacerbated the departure of foreign capital from China. To foster good relations, people will consider investing in China. It's implausible to be confrontational on one side and invite investments on the other. Previously, there were 100 daily flights from Beijing to the U.S. Now there are only five. How can we progress in such a scenario? Zhang believes that to address unemployment, targeted solutions are necessary. Generic cure-all strategies offer little assistance. The New York Times reported that it's now evident that the root cause of China's economic problems lie in politics. Restoring confidence requires systemic reforms, providing genuine protection for the entrepreneurial class and private property.